Hey, what's up, everybody? It's video 44 coming at you another video. I just got through watching highlights of the Hawks Bucks game four. I tried my very best to watch the game itself, but I could not find a decent link today on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I, I was searching everywhere the almost the entire game. It was a hell of a sight over here uh, because I, I just was having no success, but it wasn't for lack of trying. But uh, for, I did watch the highlights, as I said, and uh, there was plenty that I was able to pick up from what I was able to see. Uh, first of all, get well soon, Giannis. Uh, the most important thing to mention in regards to that game is that he had an hyper and extension injury. Uh, he was trying to contest a lob uh, against Clint Capella. Uh, was coming from uh, the left side of the court, kind of trying to track Clint as he was going to go for the lob. And as Clint went up for the lob, when he came down, I guess uh, he, they came down awkward. Uh, there was a little bit of a collision between him and, and, and Clint, but more so he came down and it hyperstended his his knee. It went back in real bad. It was one of those plays where, like LeBron's injury, I felt like if it was a normal human being, their leg would have snapped. It was one of those. Like, you thank God for the type of genetics and strength that a guy like Giannis has because, uh, you know, that, that was a very, very potentially serious injury. Uh, we will see what happens with the MRI. I still have... Uh, concerns uh, because the knee did some very very serious uh, hyperextending. Uh, it was some very abnormal movement going there, uh, coming down with a lot of inertia on that leg. Uh, he is a superhuman athlete, so that does uh, make me feel better uh, about it than rather if it was just somebody normal, or regular type of player. Uh, but even for, even so, he did not return to the game. Uh, I, I would be very surprised to see him play out there. If he is going to go out there in the next one, he's going to be extremely limited. And that is bad. That is very bad for the Bucks, to say the least. So that was the first thing you want to say. Uh, get well soon, Giannis. The second thing I wanted to mention was that, um, man, Clint Capella hit an incredible behind the back shot, behind the uh, backboard shot uh, with, with time expiring on the shot clock, uh, double teamed by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was probably Bar Bobby Portis and uh, uh, Brooke Lopez. I know it was Brooke Lopez, but I'm not sure who that second person was. And he hit a shot that that you will see uh, amongst the great playoff shots ever shot in the history of the sport. It was it was just unbelievable. It was an impossible shot, and you have to see it for yourself. It was it, it must be mentioned that this took place. It was unbelievable. All right. <clears throat> so now that we've gotten kind of the most important stuff out of the way, I kind of want to get into some things that I thought were really, really, really dope. First of all, the one player that I could not remember his name at the beginning of this day, when I made a video in regards to, to, to leading up to this game, I said that the Hawks had two young players that could really help them with their perimeter defense, but those young players are out with injury in uh, DeAndre Hunter, and I couldn't remember the other guy's name. Well, his name was Cam Reddish, and he played tonight. And boy, did he play. He was able to do exactly what you needed him to do. Defend, rebound, and hit shots. He was aggressive. His conditioning looked great. And I'm sitting here thinking, I thought this guy was hurt. You're trying to tell me he had just fallen out of favor with Nate McMillan? Send him to the Lakers. <laughs> Atlanta, if you don't want Cam Reddish, we do. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He's one of those guys where... When I'm looking around at people who, who are talking about players that they want on their team, I hear Laker fans always talking about players. Oh, I want Dwight Howard. I want, and of course, I'm one of those people who say, I want Rajon Rondo back. Oh, we want Carmelo Anthony. We want Derrick Rose. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, no, no, no. Find me the next them. Don't get me the old them. I only need like one or two of those guys. Don't give me a full team full of those guys. Help me find the Cam Reddishes. The guys who are on the brink of being somebody, but they're stuck on the back of benches for reasons unknown. With Atlanta, I think it has something to do with uh, when he got hurt and who ascended during that process. And you got Gallinari coming onto the team. You got Herder coming into the team. So it's kind of hard to find time for a guy like Cam Reddish to really feature him the way you need to. But in situations like these, when Trey Young goes down, and you want to catch a guy like Budenholzer off guard because that's what he tends to do by catching people off guard, throwing monkey wrenches in there that you're not planning for. You can call Cam Reddish's number and he comes in and plays like this. Just the most important type of thing that the Atlanta Hawks needed in a game like this. 
for for what it is that they came into this game believing, uh, which was that Trey Young was not going to be out there, and because of it, they were going to be needing offense. To seeing that offense manifest from places that they didn't, you know, that quite honestly, I had no idea that player was even active. So that was super, super, super huge for the Atlanta Hawks, and I think it was the number one reason, ultimately, why they won the game. I truly believe that. If they didn't call the number of Cam Reddish and just ran out there with who they had, I don't think it gets done. I really don't. The second thing I want to say is starting Lou Williams was a great decision. Uh, Lou played excellent. I said at the beginning uh, with the other video, I said, yo, Lou Williams needs to give him some of that Laker Lou Williams, that Lou Williams that we had when we were playing poorly, but we had him playing at a, a level that made me realize that this wasn't just a good player, but a great player. Yeah, that's who needed to show up, and he did. Uh, he gave them exactly what they needed. I believe he came out of there with like 22 points, hit some big shots, made sure that he got to the line, did Lou Williams things. The next thing you want to mention is uh, the bigs of the Atlanta Hawks. Now, I know that uh, John Collins picked up two early fouls in the first quarter, so he kind of wasn't making the noise that you would normally see from John Collins, especially in a game like this. But what you did see was Clint Capella continue to play as strongly as he did, keep his name in mind because we're going to talk about him a little later. And also Onyeka Okongwu, the rookie uh, that they picked up, I believe, out of USC, the guy that played with uh, the Ball Brothers. Uh, this dude, I told y'all, I told y'all, <laughs> he's he's one of those guys where he is going to be a, what I would consider a volatile talent. At any given moment, he could turn into, he can give you glimpses of what you think he'll be tomorrow. He could start showing you what, what type of player he's going to be. He's one of those guys. And he did that tonight. He was, he was hitting shots. He was rebounding the ball. He was putting a body on people. He was defending, blocking shots. All the stuff that you need from a guy like Onyeka Wakongwu, big gorilla dunks, all that, you're getting. He's rounding in the form, and he's showing you what he's going to be. The Atlanta Hawks got them another big-time player. They never got to worry about their center position as long as they keep him and Capella intact. And, um, of course, uh, Collins as well. You keep that trio strong, and you're going to be in the playoffs every year. I guarantee you that. You're going to be there. Um, so I, I love what they have there. And, um, okay, so now that we've gotten all that out the way, I want to talk about something that wasn't so good on the Atlanta Hawks side. So, uh, Clint Capella, down the stretch of the game, maybe about three minutes left in the, on the, in the fourth quarter, was, I guess, in, in a scrum. Some, not a scrum, but kind of got involved in a situation where he got hit in the eye with an elbow. I don't remember who it was that hit him in the, el hit him in the eye with the elbow. But my thing was, you're up by, what, 20 points, close to 20 points at that time. And one of the things that I've been talking about with the Atlanta Hawks <clears throat> is how I felt they've mismanaged their injury situation and they've kind of mismanaged uh, just their players in general. <clears throat> and I've talked about it in previous videos. And this is exactly the type of thing that only fuels that argument. Clint Capella's in the game up by a trillion it's only a few minutes left you got on yekano kongwu playing great why in the heck is clint capella on the floor you already missing trey young you're already halfway through a series that's already halfway through the playoffs meaning that a lot of basketball has been played all season long with everybody getting injured the only there's no there's no healthy teams left and you're going to have one of your most important players on the floor when the game is out of hand with only a few minutes left. I think that's the type of stuff that I was talking about in regards to how I felt they mismanaged Trey Young's injury in the last game where they should have taken him off the floor and gotten treatment. I felt like they've mismanaged Bogey's injury to where he should not have been out there, not 100%. And this was another one of them situations where they mismanaged that because Clint Capella should have not been on the floor at that time. The risk was too high. The game was out of hand. So here we go again. If the Atlanta Hawks don't make it out of this series, because I don't know what Clint, Clint Capella's injury, how, how that's going to look. It was bad, though, because he was grabbing his eye and he didn't get off the floor for a while uh, and, and did not return into the game, obviously, with that little time left anyway. He, maybe he's lucky enough to get a mask. If I'm a betting man, if the NBA is going to follow protocol, he may be facing concussion protocol because I know they are sometimes about concussion protocol, as we know. Because Devin Booker did not enter concussion protocol. And we know damn well with a broken nose, you 100% have a concussion. But we're not going to even talk about that right now. Because we're happy to see Devin Booker out there. So we'll see how this goes. If they follow protocol that is safe and healthy for the players, 
Clint Capella is going to probably miss the next game, which bodes very, very poorly for the Atlanta Hawks and is a monkey wrench into the plans of Nate McMillan. And it's his fault because he should have pulled that guy off the floor. So most people are going to assess the next game and they're going to say that the Atlanta Hawks have climbed themselves back into the series and that they've weathered the storm without Trey Young and that they found something in Cam Reddish and all of that stuff is great and they got the young player in Yekahu Kongu playing great. I must mention that Bogey played amazing. He snapped himself out of that that uh, that slump he was in. He's healed, healed from his knee injury, thank God. He shook that off uh, and came just in time to, to do so with like, I think he had six or seven threes tonight. Really, really nice game for him. Uh, and we know what he can do because throughout the meat of the season, this dude went on a stretch. He was looking like Devin Booker or somebody out there with the type of scoring numbers he was putting up consistently for a nice stretch of basketball. He showed me who he actually is. And I hadn't seen that since the shooting stars game where he was strung together a bunch of threes and got the MVP. Other than that, he kind of was sometime with the Sacramento Kings. Uh, more than not, he was kind of like all over the place. But since he's been in Atlanta, Started off a little slow to start the season, but midway through the season, he turned into somebody else and started scoring consistently pretty much almost above 30 points a night. And then he got hurt and uh, kind of fought his way back near the end of the season, started showing glimpses of that and glimpses of that and then got hurt again in these playoffs and hasn't been himself. But tonight he was able to tap into that. If he turns back into that player that he was midway through the, the season, when they first got Nate McMillan, that player that he turned into then, if he can do that in these playoffs, Atlanta Hawks have a great chance of winning the championship. I just want to put that out there. If Bogey starts scoring 30 a night, if he taps back into that, uh, I don't I don't know how the hell you stop that type of shooting. Because they already got Gallo, of whom I want to mention now, who's also shooting fantastic, who's playing great, of whom I forgot to mention in the previous video. But Gallinari is playing great, uh, and I, he was also a big part of what they did tonight. Um, so now that Cam Reddish is back, you got shooting there too. That dude can stretch the floor. He hit a shot tonight with a hand in his face. Didn't seem to even jump. Like this dude has natural talents in him to score and defend. He's a two-way player, all-star caliber prospect who will need to be worked with and given minutes to succeed and to turn into what I know he is going to be. So, you know, it's, it's early, obviously. He was only just drafted and he hasn't had a chance to really show but we've seen many players have the start to their career that cam reddish is having and still turn into what we know they're going to be so I'm, I'm a big believer and i'm glad that we he was able to show tonight in the eastern conference finals just exactly what type of talent he's going to be and like i said if the hawks don't want to use him like they're supposed to i'm sure there's 30 other teams that would love to have him on the roster he's one of those guys positionless ball handling skills scoring ability natural defensive instincts that's basically an all-star if i've ever seen one he just needs to be worked into that just needs to be, he needs to turn into that so yeah that's what i think when i saw highlights of him you know he actually reminded me of low-key like uh somewhat of a like a poor man's carmelo anthony that's who he reminded me of in terms of his scoring ability when i saw him in high, in uh in college and some of the highlights i was watching from the draft day that dude has natural ability man rj barrett type stuff in fact i think he's a little better than rj low-key so that'll tell you what I think of, of, of Cam Reddish. So anyway, but he has to develop into that, mind you. Um, so with that being said, are the Hawks getting healthy or are the Hawks still hobbling? Well, you got players coming back in Bogey and Reddish who are getting healthy. And you got players who are hobbling in Capella and Trey Young who have just gotten hurt. So at this point, you don't know what to look at. But I can tell you this, as bad as the Hawks are looking, they're looking bad. They're not looking nearly as bad as the Bucks look right now. Because the Bucks came into this game knowing that Trey Young was not going to play. Just like the Suns came into the game yesterday knowing that that uh, Zubats wasn't going to play. It kind of approached the game the same way. Oh, the Hawks ain't going to be able to give us nothing. We can run them over. It didn't happen. The Bucks got off to an early start. A couple early foul calls, I believe. A couple early shots made. And next thing you know, excuse me, next thing you know, you're playing from behind. This game is still within striking range. Range, your superstar gets hurt, and the game goes completely out of hand. Suddenly, a situation where you thought you got an easy win turns into a bad, bad loss. Milwaukee, 
starting to look a whole lot like Phoenix. <laughs> it's, it's, and, the, and the Clippers and the Hawks are starting to look alike as well. Needless to say, making predictions in these playoffs is impossible because there's ever moving pieces, ever changing things. Players coming out of nowhere playing well. Players who are important going down and teams recovering from those players going down in seemingly impossible ways. It's all over the playoffs. You're seeing the same reoccurring thing on both coasts. So now it's about who can pull it off. I'm not certain if trying to imagine what makes sense on paper even qualifies as, as, as important at this point. Now it's just about whose role players are going to outplay whose role players. Because I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a playoff of role players at this point. You know, all four teams have stars that are hobbling or trying to work their way back from injury. All four teams. Um, all four teams are missing key guys. All four teams are relying upon guys who are not stars to do heavy lifting for championship level uh, situations. You don't see this in playoff. You don't see this in the NBA. I've never seen this in the NBA. As many years as I've been watching, I've never seen this. So now, you got opportunities for guys like Reggie Jackson and Bajan Bogdanovich and who, who else? Uh, uh, you know, who? anybody. Anybody and everybody has a chance to win finals MVP this season. That's what I'm saying to you. Anybody. It could, it could be a role player that wins finals MVP because you just don't know who's going to make it through. Um, so... Atlanta. I love what I saw on a, out of Onyeka Okongwu. If he continues to play well, you may be able to weather the storm without Clint Capella. That's the thing. Because I, I have real doubts that Clint's going to be 100% in the next game. I have no idea if he's going to play or not play. I haven't even heard anybody talk about the injury. But looking at it, he got popped real good, possibly in the eye socket. I hope it's nothing too serious, but that was a big person that hit him in the eye socket. He went down and he was hurt. So, yeah, take take with that take that for what it's worth. Um, I don't know, man. And without him, they're gonna have what you would think would be rebounding issues. What you would think would be uh, a, a, a slowdown for themselves. But if Onyeka continues to play like this, and there's no Giannis, maybe that can help offset no. Capella on the other side. So the rebounding edge, it's going to be a team rebounding situation, just like the Clippers went in, ran into last, yesterday without Zubats. It's the same situation now for the Atlanta Hawks and for the Milwaukee Bucks. They're both going to have to figure out how to make up for the lack of rebounds from both Giannis and Clint Capella, respectively. So uh, I think both teams can do it. I, I think that both teams have the guys. Bobby Portis is going to be very important. Uh, Middleton's going to have to crash the boards. Um, you're going to want to see uh, Brooke Lopez rebound well. I saw him rebound, do some good things out there today. So he, you know, I don't expect any rebounding out of him. So anytime I see rebounds out of him, I'm, I'm applauding it, to be honest with you. And um, it's just one of those situations where they're just going to have to find rebounds out of other places. Uh, Drew Holiday kind of caught on a little bit. He played a little better tonight. Uh, I saw Brent Forbes got out there. He got some moments. Like I said, Bobby Portis was able to get down there. He had a good game. Um, Middleton, I didn't see his stats. But I know he didn't bounce back and have another 38-point game. I told y'all he wasn't going to do that. He never does. Uh, if he scores 38, count on him scoring 12 the next game. That's what you should expect from Chris Milton. You understand me? That's what to expect. Some guys are just like that, man. It just is what it is. He's one of them. Um, and so on and so forth. So what I saw from the Bucks is just a team that came out just like the Suns did. Got spanked in the face. But the difference between them and the Suns is their star went out. So when they got smacked in the face, it wasn't no making it close. Giannis goes down, and then it gets completely out of hand. So that's what I saw. Uh, fantastic all individual performances by a lot of Atlanta Hawks, just like I saw from the Clippers. Same thing as I told you guys. If a team has a bunch of dogs that are ready to go and are willing to hold up their end of the weight, even if a star goes down, that killer instinct and that will may be able to carry them uh, into a situation where they can beat a team that might be better than them. That's what I said in the video prior. That's what we saw. 
guys step up. Bogey, um, Onyeka, Lou Will, Gallo, uh, obviously Cam, Reddish. Yeah, as you saw. And, of course, Clint Capella, who also played fantastic before going down. So you, you saw what you needed. They got what they needed. But now they have to adjust to, to the lack of Clint and possibly Trey. Now, maybe Trey comes back in the next game. You know, maybe maybe the four days is enough rest. He's a young guy. Uh, I know it was a bone bruise, but, you know, it's going to be hard to keep that young fellow off the floor. I know he's ready to play. Tonight was hard enough to watch, I'm sure, even though they, they, they won. Uh, I saw his face at the beginning of the game. He was concerned. I don't know how much longer you're going to be able to keep him out. If I'm, if, if I'm him, I'm like, man, I'm good. Even if I'm not, I'm good. You feel me? Especially with this game five being as it is. If Clint can't go, um, yeah, I, I see Trey trying. I do. I see him trying to play. <laughs> So we'll see. We will see, man. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I don't know what the Bucks are going to do without Giannis, y'all. I don't know. But if Middleton and um, – if they can get what they need to get out of Middleton, Portis, and Drew Holiday, I do think they'll be okay. I do. I think they'll, may, they'll keep the game close and they'll have a chance to win the game without Giannis. I just look at Giannis and I say what I've seen from the Bucks in the past is them play well without Giannis. I remember when Giannis went down about a year and a half ago and Middleton was asked to be the main scorer. He was able to keep that up, some of the best basketball he played. So with the defensive-minded players that they have, like P.J. Tucker um, and, and players such as, uh, like I said, Drew Holiday, you know, Brent Forbes, if he's going to get more minutes, continue to play well. Uh, if they can continue to keep those guys engaged, if they can keep Pat Connaughton. He's, he's, had, he's been iffy, but I've saw, seen him do some good things defensively. If they can just get a lot out of everybody, I haven't seen Dante DiVincenzo. It would be wise for them to play him a little more. It's one of those situations where I'm like, this, this player is a little too talented for the type of role that they're giving him. Just like, just like uh, Bobby Portis. It's like, I, Budenholzer does his thing his his way. You know, it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to work. So, that's that's my theory with that guy. Uh, but it, it would be a great time for him to reach into Dante DiVincenzo bag and try to see if that guy can give you something because he played great throughout throughout the meat of the season. Which is, I don't know. Anyway, so. There you go. That's what I got. Like I said, it was plenty to say. There was a lot to unpack in that game, and I think I missed some things. But, um, you know, the Bucks and the Hawks are, are down stars, period. So whoever's coming out of the East is going to be limping into the finals, period. And I, I don't I don't know that the Western team's going to be doing it much better anyway, so it might balance itself out. Great playoffs, you guys. Hope you're enjoying them too. My name is BDF44. Thank you for watching.